Hello and welcome to Blackhawk Kids Online. My name's Rebecca and I am so excited to spend time with you today. I have one husband, three kids, two sisters, and seven nieces and nephews. I am so lucky to have a big family and to live really close to them. I like to go for walks with my husband and put together puzzles with my sisters. My kids like to go for bike rides and I go sledding with them. I like to watch movies with my nieces and nephews and sometimes all I really want to do is find a quiet place to read a book and eat some cookies by myself. It's hard to have time for everyone, but today I'm making time to spend with you because you are important to me too. So far this year, we've been looking at stories in the Bible about Jesus. The more we learn about him, the more we see that there are so many reasons to be like Jesus. Last week, Jesus showed us that we should look around and see how we can help others. We're going to learn more about Jesus today. This Jesus that we keep talking about, do you know how much he loves you? He loves you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. He loves all of you. This love gives us a reason to sing and shout and dance around. Come on, everybody, let's praise him and move and sing a song together. Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so, he loves me so, he loves me so. Everybody praise him. Come on and sing and shout. Come on and dance around, round. Everybody praise him. Come on and sing and shout. Come on and dance around, round. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come on, let's go. Jesus loves me so. I hope you got some wiggles out and that you are ready to settle in for our Bible story. Find a comfy spot to sit. Before we jump into the Bible story, let's pray together. God, thank you for the Bible and how it teaches us about you and how we can be like Jesus. Amen. Be like Jesus. Let's learn from Jesus, live like Jesus, and love like Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. How do we learn about Jesus to be like him? My friend Heather loves to talk about the Bible and she's going to help us learn more about Jesus. <laughs> it's time for our Bible story. Hello, my name is Heather and I get to be with you today to talk about our Bible story. It is found in the book of Mark. And in this story, Jesus is teaching people about God and what it looks like to love others the way God loves us. Large groups of people would gather to hear Jesus teach. Have you ever been somewhere really crowded? Maybe a park, a concert, or even the beach? <laughs> I have. 
And in our story, there were many, many people crowded together to see Jesus. And it was probably really noisy, like this. Jesus must have been very tired from lots of teaching and lots of people. The crowds of people were moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, and kids just like you. The Bible says that people wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. They also wanted Jesus to bless their children. A blessing is a special prayer, asking God to watch over and protect their children. The story you are about to hear is a true story about Jesus. But there are some people in the story who are made up. You'll hear about Lydia. She's the mom in the story, and she has a little boy named Eli. Eli is two years old, and he is very busy. You'll also hear about Bernice. Bernice is Lydia's cousin. Even though these characters are made up, they help us understand a story that really happened long ago. And you're about to learn something very important about Jesus. Listen for what Jesus has to say about children. And don't forget, he's talking about you. Let's take a look and see what happens. In Mark 10, we can read about a time when Jesus welcomed a group of children and held them in his arms and blessed them. Now, we don't know the names of those kids or their parents, but we can imagine what it might have been like for one tiny boy and his mother. Lydia was ready to tear out her hair. Early that morning, her husband Jude left for the market with a cart full of fresh bread ready to sell. Lydia was trying to bake a fresh batch of rye loaves, but her two-year-old son, Eli, was making it impossible. <laughs> no, stop, don't touch that. Whee! Eli had tipped an entire sack of flour. The dust exploded everywhere. Eli? Bernice, Lydia's cousin from Capernaum, laughed. He's just a bit energetic. Ha, huh, that's like calling the Red Sea a muddy pond. Next, Eli had run out into the yard to pull the ghost tail and yank up handfuls of potato plants in the garden. Rock! Rock! No, 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 no. Those are baby potatoes, not ripe yet. Lydia brushed dirt from her hands and glanced over at the clay oven. Bernice, can you keep Eli busy while I build up the fire? Of course. Lydia fanned a small fire to heat the oven. Bernice and Eli wandered towards the road, exploring. Get! Get! Lydia noticed that more people than usual seemed to be passing by. Soon, it was a steady stream. Bernice hurried back, Eli in tow. Jesus, they're going to see Jesus. What? Where? Someone said he's teaching by the river near the olive grove. They both stared as the growing crowd poured along the road. So many people. This Jesus must have amazing things to say. I listened to him at Capernaum. He's different. I can't explain it. We should take him to see Jesus. Bernice, no rabbi in his right mind wants to be bothered by a child. Maybe, but Jesus did something in Capernaum. This little boy was there and Jesus picked him up. Really? He said, um, anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Wow. Lydia stared down at the wriggling toddler in her arms. Do you think maybe Jesus would bless Eli? Only one way to find out. Lydia tucked a loaf of bread and a water skin inside of an empty flour sack, and the two women joined the crowd along the road. There's the olive grove. It took what seemed like hours to work their way through the crowd. By the time Lydia and Bernice neared the front, Eli was hungry and tired of being carried. <laughs> down, down. As she gripped her kicking child, Lydia finally caught a glimpse of a man sitting beneath a gnarled olive tree. Is that him? Yes. Jesus looked tired. His face was strong, but kind. Uh, there, we can get through right over there. But as Lydia and Bernice neared Jesus, two men stepped into their paths. The men's beards were bushy, 
and their robes travel stained. No one gets through right now. You can see Jesus has to rest. Uh, we only need a moment. We thought maybe he could say a blessing for my son. Look at this crowd. They all want to see him. You think Jesus has time for babysitting? Shamed, Lydia turned away. But Jesus had noticed the commotion. He was on his feet now, walking toward them. Wait! Jesus' eyes blazed with anger as he approached his friends. The disciples tried to explain themselves. Uh, th this woman, we, we thought... Let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. God's kingdom belongs to people like them. Jesus' friends quickly stepped back. Everyone nearby was now listening. Lydia stood frozen, still unsure what to do, until Eli stopped struggling, his eyes fixed on Jesus, and then Eli waved. Hi! Jesus' face lit up with a smile. What I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who will not receive God's kingdom like a little child will never enter it. Jesus reached out as the entire crowd watched in amazement Eli leaned forward and tipped right into Jesus' arms. Gently, Jesus placed his hand on Eli's head. Then he blessed the boy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Other parents came forward quickly, bringing their own sons and daughters for a blessing. With a smile, Jesus handed Eli back to Lydia and knelt down to welcome the other children. Bye-bye. Slowly, Lydia and Bernice made their way back through the crowd with the now happily babbling Eli. They were in awe of the way that Jesus used his power and authority to bless one tiny child. I love hearing how Jesus is so kind. He sure does love children. Jesus had many people gather each time he taught. His friends, the disciples went everywhere with Jesus. They thought Jesus was tired and needed to rest after traveling and teaching so much. They didn't think Jesus would have any time to talk to children, but they were wrong. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. How cool is that? Jesus had time for those kids and Jesus has time for you. He loves all people, grown-ups, kids, people with a little money, people with lots of money, people who are sick, people that are mean, people that no one likes. You see what I mean? Jesus sees you just the way you are and thinks you are important and valuable. Sometimes people can be so busy work, appointments, school, video calls, and all the things. But have you ever wanted to talk to someone and thought, they don't have time for me? That can be really hard. Friends, I really want you to hear this next part. Jesus is different because he is never too busy for you. He wants you to know that you can come to him day or night, when you're sick or when you're well, and when you're happy and when you're sad. He's always there. Jesus loves you. That's our story for this week. I'll see you next week for another true story from the Bible. Goodbye. Get ready to move.
Wow, friends, that was fun. Settle back in. What does this story about Jesus and the children have to do with me and you? First, let me show you what I made. Jesus always has time for me. This watch goes with our Bible story for today. In this story, Jesus had time for children, for kids like you and you and you and you. And Jesus had time for the kids because he loved them. Jesus knows that when we make time for others, it shows that we love them. When your mom leaves work to pick you up from school because you feel sick, you feel loved because she made time for you. When your friend puts down their phone or video game to talk to you, you feel loved because they made time for you. It doesn't matter if you're a kid or a grown-up. To live like Jesus, we can make time for others too. What could this look like in your life? Here are some ideas. When your little sister or brother is bored, set aside your book or Lego set or whatever you're doing and play with them. You could ask them to play a game or go outside and play in the snow together. Or instead of playing video games all afternoon, take a few minutes and call your grandma or grandpa or someone else that would love to hear from you. Ask your grown-up if they can help you make the call on their phone. Or at daycare or school, sit by someone new at lunch or invite someone to play with you at recess. If you've ever been the kid sitting alone, you know how great it feels when someone makes time for you. We can be like Jesus. We can make time for others and show them that we love them, just like Jesus did. Jesus has time for everyone, and that includes you. We can learn from Jesus, live like Jesus, and love like Jesus. Let's pray together right now. I will say the words out loud, but you can listen and say them in your heart. Close your eyes, be still, and let's talk to God. Dear God, we love you. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and that he wasn't too important or too busy for anyone. He always made time for others to show them love. Forgive us, God, when we do only what we want to do. It can be so hard to have time for everything. We pray that you help us make time for others like Jesus did. Show us how to do this, how to spend time with our family and friends like Jesus would. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. It's time for our Bible verse. Every month we learn words from the Bible. We put these words in our head and in our heart so that they are there when we need them. Here's our Bible verse for this month. Jesus said, come and follow me, Matthew 4, 19. Let's say our new Bible verse again. Join me if you can. Jesus said, come and follow me, Matthew 4, 19. To follow Jesus means to copy him or do what he does, and that's how we live like Jesus. Thanks again for joining Blackhawk Kids Online today. This watch that I made? I got this idea from the Family Guide. You can ask your grown-up to print one for you to color and decorate. Then you can wear it and be reminded that Jesus always has time for you. As we say goodbye for today, Let's sing one more song together. 
This song is a great reminder that Jesus loves me and he loves you always and every day. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Today's Bible story made me want to call my grandma and make time for her. Have a great week. Bye. Hi, Grandma. How are you? It's Rebecca. Are you good? Oh, I just wanted to make time to hear you talk today. <laughs>